The United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket is in big trouble after it exploded amid preparations for a test flight in May. As of now, it is uncertain if the rocket will launch in the foreseeable future, as it usually takes around a year to recover from such an incident. In today's video, let's take a closer look at what caused this explosion. Can ULA recover from this massive setback? The United Launch Alliance is a joint venture between private space companies Lockheed Martin and Boeing that provides launch vehicles to NASA, the Department of Defense, and other organizations. Headquartered in Denver, Colorado, ULA's rockets are among the largest and most powerful in the industry. ULA was formed in 2006 and has since successfully delivered more than 100 satellites to orbit using the Atlas and Delta families of rockets. Lockheed Martin and Boeing are two aerospace companies that had previously been competitors for launch services to the U.S. government. The two companies joined in an equal partnership to form ULA in an effort to reduce costs. The venture was started in response to Elon Musk's SpaceX, which had been undercutting its competitors' prices by developing reusable rockets. SpaceX and ULA are now each other's main competitors for government launches, each having secured contracts for both scientific and national security missions. Musk has famously disparaged ULA in public as recently as August 2020, tweeting that their rockets are a complete waste of taxpayer money. The highly anticipated Vulcan heavy lift rocket was getting prepped for its inaugural flight when a spark triggered a fiery explosion at NASA's Alabama launch facility, potentially threatening next month's rocket debut. On Thursday, United Launch Alliance Chief Executive Tori Bruno shared a closer look at the explosion that took place on March 29th at the test stand at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama. Hydrogen accumulated inside the stand, found an ignition source, burned fast, Bruno tersely wrote on Twitter. Overpressure caved in our forward dome and damaged the rig. ULA had been pressurizing the upper stage of the Vulcan rocket when the anomaly occurred. A spark ignited a significant accumulation of hydrogen fuel, causing a massive fireball to sweep over the test rig. This is why we thoroughly and rigorously exercise every possible condition on the ground before flight. An investigation is underway, Bruno wrote on Twitter after the explosion. Vulcan will fly when complete. ULA's two-stage Vulcan Centaur rocket has been in development since 2014, and its debut was finally scheduled on May 4th following several delays. The Colorado-based company had originally hoped to launch Vulcan in 2020 and then again in 2022 before deciding it was ready to fly next month. ULA was waiting for the delivery of two BE-4 engines built by Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, which came more than four years late. Following the unfortunate anomaly, however, it's not clear when Vulcan will get to fly. ULA will get access to the first stage on Friday, recovering it for analysis according to ULA's Bruno. Don't know yet whether the leak was in the test article or the test rig, he wrote on Twitter. The fully expendable 202-foot-tall rocket is set to replace ULA's Atlas V and Delta IV rockets, which have been in use for the past two decades. The Vulcan Centaur is designed to lift 27.2 metric tons to low Earth orbit and 6.5 metric tons to geosynchronous orbit. By comparison, SpaceX's Falcon 9 can carry 22.8 metric tons to LEO. ULA was counting on the success of its first mission in order to schedule another Vulcan launch later this year for Sierra Space's Dream Chaser mission. The company needs to complete two Vulcan flights in order to get certified to launch U.S. military and intelligence satellites for the Space Force. ULA is under contract to deliver 35 missions for the U.S. Space Force in the next five years. Vulcan is also booked to launch more satellites for Amazon's Kuiper satellite project. For its inaugural mission, the rocket is set to deliver Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander, which, on behalf of NASA, will attempt to deliver 11 payloads to the lunar surface. Vulcan will also attempt to deliver the first two Amazon Kuiper Internet satellites to low Earth orbit, which are owned by Blue Origin's Bezos. During his back and forth with Twitter users, Bruno reassured his followers that the massive fireball wasn't as bad as it looked and that only time will tell whether Vulcan's upper stage will be fit for liftoff. The Vulcan Centaur is a new methane-fueled rocket due to be launched in late 2023. The Vulcan Centaur rocket will replace ULA's well-established workhorses, the Atlas V and the Delta IV, in launching payloads to space. 
As with its predecessors, this rocket will launch satellites into a variety of orbits, including geosynchronous ones or missions to the moon, for NASA and other U.S. government customers. However, ULA says that the new rocket will be able to fly more cheaply than the company's older rockets, thanks to an initiative called SMART, which stands for Sensible Modular Autonomous Return Technology. This program allows the most expensive parts of the rocket to be recovered after launch and refurbished for reuse. Parts of the new design use well-established technology such as the Centaur upper stage and the solid rocket boosters used on the Delta IV. More innovative is the main Vulcan core stage which will employ a completely different type of rocket engine than the previous ULA launchers. The BE-4 engine, designed and manufactured by Blue Origin, the spaceflight company started by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. The BE-4 will also be used for Blue Origin's new Glenn orbital rocket when it is ready. ULA elected to go with the US-made BE-4 to remove reliance on a Russian-made engine, the RD-180, that was a key part of the Atlas V configuration. In 2014, geopolitical relations between the United States and Russia soured when Russia invaded Crimea, Ukraine, and things worsened when Russia made a second unsanctioned invasion of other regions of Ukraine starting in February 2022. Aside from the International Space Station, most international space partnerships with Russia have been torn asunder in the wake of the second invasion, so the supply chain pivot will eventually benefit ULA. However, the BE-4 engine has proved to be one of the main stumbling blocks on Vulcan Centaur's journey to flight readiness, which was originally expected in 2020. The BE-4 is a hugely ambitious piece of engineering, but that's just one reason for the delays. Anonymous sources have also pointed to problems arising from a shortage of available hardware, necessary design changes, and shutdowns in the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. More powerful than the Space Shuttle's main engines, the BE-4 is designed to be fueled by methane, which is new in the context of space launch systems. Several companies, including SpaceX, Blue Origin, and China's LandSpace, are developing launchers around it, but no methane-fueled rocket has made it to space. NASA will be one of Vulcan Centaur's biggest users, but the U.S. Space Force will be another important customer. Prompted by the recognition that space, particularly surveillance and communication systems, has become indispensable to modern military operations, the role of the USSF is to protect U.S. interests in the space domain. Military space launches, previously the province of the U.S. Air Force, now fall within the USSF. For example, in July 2022, a ULA Atlas V rocket launched a pair of spacecraft, a missile tracking satellite, and a technology demonstrator platform on behalf of the U.S. Space Force. ULA is not the only launcher for the USSF, however. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket is also a popular choice as it has affordable self-landing technology and launches frequently and reliably. SpaceX's newer Falcon Heavy has also been used for national security launches requiring more mass lifted to Earth orbit. Unlike the methane-fueled, partially reusable Vulcan booster, there's nothing revolutionary about Vulcan Centaur's upper stage. In its basic design, Centaur is one of the U.S.'s oldest and most successful pieces of space hardware. Originally conceived at the dawn of the space age in the late 1950s, Centaur's first successful flight atop an Atlas booster took place on November 27, 1963. Since then, Centaur has flown over 260 times, sending one spacecraft after another on its way into the history books. From the United States' first lunar soft lander, Surveyor 1, in 1966, to the Curiosity and Perseverance Mars rovers of today. Elon Musk never seems afraid to speak his mind and, when it comes to billions of dollars in government contracts for launching rockets, the SpaceX CEO is especially pointed. The billionaire founder sparred Wednesday on Twitter with Tory Bruno. At the core of the dispute is Musk's view that ULA receives heavy government support, a position that Bruno ardently denies. ULA would be dead as a doornail without the two launch provider DOD requirement, Musk wrote in a tweet. In this case, it is money diverted from making life multiplanetary, which is the goal of SpaceX, versus the ULA goal of maximizing dividends to Lockheed and Boeing, Musk added in another tweet. Musk has previously referenced ULA receiving a billion-dollar annual subsidy from the Pentagon and last year called the competitor a complete waste of taxpayer money. Bruno, for his part, has repeatedly called the idea that ULA receives government subsidies an absurd myth, saying there is no subsidy and published an op-ed with his view on the misinformation. 
The CEOs are referring to an Air Force agreement commonly called ELC. In a hearing five years ago before the Armed Services Subcommittee, the late Senator John McCain summarized ELC and its relationship with ULA, a company that was formed in 2006, combining Boeing and Lockheed Martin's rocket businesses in a 50-50 partnership. The purpose of ELC was to ensure that ULA, as the sole United States launch provider at the time, could be ready to launch when critical national security payloads were needed, McCain wrote in a statement, noting it was part of a broader contract called EELV created to fund the fixed cost of maintaining ULA launch infrastructure critical to assuring access to space. For about a decade, ULA dominated the market of U.S. launches for large and expensive military satellites. SpaceX infamously sued the Air Force in 2014 over a contract awarded solely to ULA. The lawsuit was later settled, and the past few years have seen the military award both SpaceX and ULA multiple contracts through competition. After the SpaceX settlement, McCain, like Musk, was critical of ULA continuing to receive funding under ELC. Stop subsidizing one military industrial complex for $800 million a year from the taxpayers, McCain said in a 2016 hearing. How can you compete when your competition is being paid $800 million a year just to stay in business? Congress directed the Air Force to discontinue the ELC contract by the end of 2020, and the most recent ULA payment under the agreement was $98.5 million in 2019 for three launches. Bruno responded to Musk on Wednesday, further denying that ULA receives government subsidies and instead pointing to the company's current rivalry. Competition is healthy for the industry and customers. Our nation is better off for having the broader industrial base we now enjoy as a result, Bruno wrote. I congratulate you on your considerable accomplishments. We are also proud of ours, he added. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about SpaceX's plans to launch the Starship Super Heavy next week. Do you think the Vulcan rocket will be ready for another launch attempt this year? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.